basically, today's talk is going to be about how you can claim power back as the public and you don't necessarily have to ask for permission or go through the established routes to change. Um, so on Level Up, some of the campaigns that we've run, why does this keep going back to this slide? Can someone... <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we have run a campaign to change the way that the media reports fatal domestic abuse. I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow. Um, why does this keep changing? I'm not clicking it. <laughs> um, OK, so there you go. Um, another campaign that we've run is we've flown planes over football matches um, to protest sexual violence in sports because there was a culture of silence around football is raping women and we found that the only way to actually interrupt it was to take the message onto the pitch. Um, and we succeeded. The Premier League in the UK have now introduced mandatory sexual consent training across all teams and staff. Um, and the campaign I'm going to talk to you about today is about Love Island. Have you heard of Love Island? Does anyone watch Love Island outside the UK? Please say yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm a, I'm a big Love Island fan. Um, and if you're, the, the point I want to make today is that whether you like it or not, Love Island is viewed by 3 million people in the UK every night. And that's not even factoring in the international audience, okay? It has huge cultural influence, especially over young people. The season every year runs for eight weeks. I want you to bear those two things in mind. Okay, this is what Love Island looks like. So if you're not familiar with it, it's a reality TV show where lots of young and beautiful people have to compete in challenges um, to essentially win a cash prize. It's trashy, it's ridiculous, and it's amazing television. Um, and what I noticed, so back in 2018, I was watching it every single night, and in the ad breaks, <laughs> This is what they were showing. Okay, I'm going to try and play this video. But effectively, they were showing adverts for breast enhancement surgery and um, appetite suppressant pills. Let me try and... How do I play this video? Oh, Chris! Continue talking all the time. It's so distractive. Sorry. Can someone help me play this video? Okay. <laughs> this is I can talk you through it if it's not going to work. I'm not doing it. They're doing it. Take the Skinny Sprinkles 20-day challenge. What is it? Use Skinny Sprinkles before every meal and lose weight. And right now, save £15 when you buy two boxes, plus an extra 10% with discount code TV10. How does it work? Skinny Sprinkles contains glucomannan, a natural fibre that expands in your stomach, leaving less room for food and is clinically proven to aid weight loss. All you need to do is sprinkle, stir and drink. Start sprinkling today. Visit SkinnySprinkles.com. Um, <laughs> so... I obviously don't need to explain to you why this is a problem, given that this is what Love Island looks like. <laughs> so what Level Up set out to do um, was to run a campaign to get these adverts taken out of the breaks between this TV show because it promotes such a narrow standard of beauty. Um, and ultimately, it was really unethical because especially the breast enhancement surgery, it there was a clear message underneath it that said, oh, it's for 16 and up, and you can get it on a payment plan. So we launched a campaign called Stop Selling Me Surgery. We, we sat down and we thought, OK, how can we get these stupid adverts taken off TV? So the first question we had to ask was, who do we target? One, do we go directly to ITV, the TV channel? Two, do we go to the regulator? This is a regulatory issue. What do we do? Do we file a complaint and we say to the regulator, you need to police this, you need to ban these adverts? Or do we just go straight to ITV? Um, I don't have much patience as a person, so we just went straight to ITV. Um, the comms aim was to kind of shame ITV as a brand to say, you know, you are selling boob jobs to 16-year-olds. That's what you're doing. And you're receiving corporate money to do that. 
Um, and ultimately, the biggest uh, aim for us in terms of comms was to make ITV's brand name synonymous with unethical adverts to teenagers. Um, our three key messages was, Love Island is great TV, because as some of you may know, a lot of people just think, oh, it's terrible TV, it's stupid, like tune out of it, but that's not how culture works. Culture is how we understand how we shape the world, and whether you like it or not, it's happening all the time, and participating in it is the best way to shape it. Second key message, the show promotes a very narrow standard of beauty. Everyone's tiny, everybody's had surgery, um, it's just a fact. And three, it's time that ITV behaved responsibly and banned surgery and diet advertising during Love Island commercial breaks. Hard to disagree with, in my opinion. Um, what we then did, because obviously we're a feminist organization and lots of people are used to being shouted at by feminists, um, and we decided to team up with two very unlikely allies. One was the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons. Um, they they agreed with us that the adverts were unethical. Their position was because they were being sold on payment plans and because they were being marketed at a younger audience, that was not, um, that was not an ethical way because these are life-changing surgeries and actually you need to take a lot more time to have informed consent. And second was the Mental Health Foundation. So obviously I don't need to explain what they do, but they look out for people's mental health interests. And they have a specific interest in young people. So we teamed up with these two organizations to form a coalition. We also invited parents to join, um, join our cause, and I'll go into that in a second why. Um, and ultimately, because this was such a big part of mainstream culture, we decided to try and get as much news coverage around the issue as we could specifically targeting the Daily Mail. So I don't know if you're that familiar with the UK news landscape, but the Daily Mail is obviously just the most read publication. Their website is constantly updating. Um, it's also the perfect publication for ITV to really take us seriously. So we launched some research to look at how women felt when they saw Love Island. We found that 40% of women feel terrible about their looks, <laughs> obviously, um, after watching Love Island. Um, and we, the, we sold this data across the press. So ITV had to listen because not only were we saying you need to take these adverts down, we had proof that actually they were making people feel terrible. And there was a clear link between people wanting to have um, cosmetic surgery. So one in 10 people were more likely to consider lip fillers, one of the questions asked. So then we got the public on side. We got par primarily parents um, to email directly to ITV executives. Um, we got 2,000 emails sent to them in a matter of like three days. And there were so many parents saying, my teenage daughter watches your TV show. What do you think you are doing selling appetite suppressant sprinkles on national television? That's so irresponsible. Um, the second thing we did was, as you saw, release the polling across the press. Um, and I think the key thing that I would recommend, and I'll come back to this at the end, is that what we did effectively was build power together. We could have gone to the regulator and we could have knocked on the door and said very nicely, you know, what they're doing is so unethical, please take this seriously. The regulator would take two, three months, maybe years to investigate that. By that time, the season would finish. So we knew we had eight weeks to get rid of these TV adverts. And that's why we built power. That's why we teamed up with other people. That's why we got 2,000 people. We got the plastic surgeons. We got the Mental Health Foundation. We became impossible to ignore. And we won. They took the adverts off air very quietly. They just disappeared. Um, but then what happened in July 2018, so it was, it was halfway through the season, um, the CEO of ITV, who's on the right, she was actually on BBC Breakfast Television um, and that she was being interviewed about their viewing figures. And the presenter asked her a question, what about those boob job adverts? And that's when we knew the campaign had won because that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted ITV to become synonymous with selling boob jobs to 16 year olds. And as soon as she was asked that question, she said, you know, I do admit that those adverts were not quite right. Um, and th that was it. Um, celebrate, celebrate, that was us. We were very happy um, continued watching Love Island. <laughs> and the point I wanna make is that three months later, the regulator decided the ads were bad. So if we had gone to the regulator to ask very nicely, please, can you look at these adverts? Uh, the season would have finished. And 
ultimately, they made the decision to ban the adverts in October. The season finished in August. Um, so basically, very quickly, if you move with the public and you know how to work with the media, then you can achieve what a regulator does in the space of less than two weeks. Um, if you want to kind of be nice and polite and, you know, be beg from the people in power, uh, you can wait three months. Uh, I still think that's quite quick for a regulator. It could take years and years. Um, so I guess the choice is up to you, but I just came here to say that you don't have to sit and ask nicely. If you see something you don't like, then just build the power and get it changed. <laughs>